Okay, this is a sample training video for the VDR demo box for sales. Um, one thing to note about this thing is there's two connectors. One is the USB connector. The other is the power ground and communications cable that interfaces to the VMUX display cases via a jumper harness that can also be used with a touchscreen Vista or other VMUX device. The demo box has a power and ground switch on the back I'm sorry, a power switch on the back which allows you to work with um, power that is supplied through the VMUX case connector or through an internal battery 9 volt located in the box. Whenever you're using this device make sure that you switch the power to external when it's not connected and then when you want to operate on battery, switch over to the battery. The actual VDR, which is represented by the picture, is contained within the case. The seatbelt indicator is shown here um, attached to the case. Six switches, six seat positions are represented by the switches. Six seat belts are represented by the adjacent switch. There's also a park, brake input, a dimmer input, which is an analog value that feeds into the VDR. A beeper output from the seatbelt indicator for an external beeper, and also an external indicator for a light that is powered by the VDR itself. The VDR is typically operated on a vehicle when the key is enabled, so we'll turn us on to power. Unless there's an indicator that indicates that the, the demo unit is on. As soon as the power is applied to the VDR, if its position is seated, you'll see the red indicator come on to indicate that somebody is seated. And then when the belt buckle is applied, the indicator turns green to indicate that there is a safe condition of that seat. The order, the sequence of the seated and then belted is very important to the operation of the VDR. The occupant must first seat and then buckle. If somebody tries to seat, not put their belt on, and then the park brake is released, the unit will beep an audible tone to let you know that there is an error situation on the seat. If the occupant attempts to buckle the belt first and then seat, that is also an error condition, and if the park brake is released, you will have an external beeper. Okay, I just set the park brake back. To get out of this condition where the belt was first buckled and then seated, the occupant must first unbuckle the belt and then rebuckle. And you'll have a safe condition. When showing this unit, you also need to indicate or be aware that there is a timeout or a debounce timer on the seat switch. And this is to uh, deal with the bouncing and jouncing that happens on a vehicle during operation. So if the occupant does temporarily come out of a seat, like on a large bump, um, you'll see that it does not immediately give you the red light. There is a timer in there that looks at the switch, and if the switch stays open for a specific amount of time, an error will be indicated. So please note that when you're demoing this box. Okay. Now you notice that as I seat and reseat, I can't get that condition fault to go away. I must unbuckle my seat and properly rebuckle. This holds true for all seats on the shown on the box, and which like I said in this case there are six. So you must first, first be seated and then properly buckled. To show the um, dimmability of the unit, this would typically be tied into the dimmer circuit of the vehicle, of the headlights. So as the headlights are dimmed, the indicator lights also dim. If the power is completely lost to the dimmer circuit, for example, the lights are shut off, you'll see they'll revert back to full brightness.